What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're talking about my sales script I use to get more clients for my SaaS agency. Let's go. All right, everybody, we're going to jump right into this, but I want to say thank you so much for consuming all the content on this channel. I hope that you're getting a ton of value, and I know that this is the one piece of content that I keep getting asked for over and over again. So today is my attempt to pass along my process that I use to sell SaaS, and specifically the process I use to sell Upex as a software to my end customer. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this like a seasoned pro. I guess that's me, my step-by-step -step formula for one-on-one -on -one sales calls. Now, before we get too far into this, I wanna make sure that over the years, if you have found yourself struggling with sales, the chances are it's because you're doing one of these things, okay? What I mean by that is specifically in order, you're trying to, to sell to too many people, okay? And not a very specific targeted avatar, okay? That is the most egregious offender of people who are new to sales. The biggest way to solve a problem in selling is just to get very granular on who it is that you help, who it is that you serve, okay? They pitch when they should ask. Most of the time, a salesperson is talking so much that they don't even ask what the person wants in the first place. 99% of sales are lost because the salesman speaks too much and too early. Questions, finding out who they are, that's the key, okay? They sell a whole bunch of solutions and they don't sell one clear desired outcome. Okay, that's a big one. Okay, and then they tell when they should show. Now that one concept will reveal itself over and over again during this script. You will see that we're doing our, our best effort to put visually the image of what we're uh, producing for our clients in their head by demonstrating, even if we're not demonstrating anything, we're demonstrating with the script what their future outcome is going to be. Real selling is all about getting clear on your client's needs. Okay, I mean crystal clear. It's about demonstrating you understand the nature of their problem. Not that just you have a superficial understanding of, oh, okay, you want more leads because yada, yada, yada. That's not what we're talking about. You have to understand the nature, the dynamics of their problem. The next thing is replacing false ideas with your new opportunities, your correct ideas. Okay, every customer will come into your sales call with a prejudice with a preconceived notion about what it is that you do and you have to identify and replace that story and giving clients a clear offer at the end. The key word there is clear, not a whole bunch of different offers, a clear, concise offer. Now, um, if you've watched this channel and you saw my give me 30 minutes and I will work a sales miracle in your agency. You've already heard this story. So I'm not going to belabor that. I will link it right here so you can go back and watch that. If you have not seen that video, it really will be the foundation of this sales script. A one minute quick summary. Basically back in the day, I was struggling to get sales. I was trying to sell to too many people until I came to a point to where I found a gal whose name was Christina. She was selling, I was a mortgage originator. She was selling um, real estate, real, uh, I'm sorry, first time homes to first time home buyers who spoke Spanish. That's several layers deep in terms of a specific avatar. I approached her, said, hey, I know that you probably deal with people not wanting to do first time home buyer loans because most people don't. I know that you probably have to translate for your people because most loan originators don't speak Spanish. I did. And I wonder if you have some people who have been trying to get help and just can't. If so, send them to me. That demonstrated I understood the nature of her problem. I gave her a very clear offer and boom, five new clients just like that. So the question is, why did it go? In my previous experience when I was trying to sell, I was still selling mortgages to people, but it was incredibly difficult. Why did it become very, very easy? It's because I follow the steps that our scripts, that our script follows, and that was in that video. Number one, I got clear on her needs. I mean, I got crystal clear, okay? I demonstrate I understood her situation. I said, you probably have people who haven't been able to get approved. 
You probably have to translate for them. You probably, bop, 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 bop. I demonstrated, I understood more than, hey, I'm here to sell a loan. No, I'm here because I understand your predicament. Okay, replacing the false ideas with the right one. In that case, it was probably that, you know, those people couldn't get approved where I could get them approved. And I proved to her that I could do that. And then I gave her a very clear offer at the end. Hey, that situation is crappy. I can help it. If you want any help, send them over to me right now. All right. So we're going to jump into the script. But before we do that, I want you to understand one thing. Even though you know what you're selling before you get on the call, you must follow this process in order to be able to sell your thing. Okay. So I, I know a lot of people are like, well, if you're trying to just change the script every single time, I mean, how is this going to work? Understand that the people you're talking to are talking to you for a reason. They either saw an ad, they got an email, or they saw something that motivated that call. Okay. We have to understand that all of our script, the entire thing is a process. And this is the nature of our process. We go from clients who understand that they have a problem. Okay. So when they saw your ad, when they saw your email, when they read the ideas, when they viewed them on a video, whatever it was, you introduced a concept that confused them, meaning, Hey, I want quality leads, not crappy leads. All I've been getting is crappy leads. And you said, Hey, I can get you quality leads because we use X, Y, Z, whatever. That's going to put them out of alignment. So now they know they have a problem, but to them, it's very gen general. All right. So your script's job, the, the, what we're doing here today, the job of this script is to take them from the frustrated, confused zone where they just know they have a problem. They know there's some type of interest in what you do. We need to take them from there over to the closing zone or basically where we provide a very focused, simple, specific solution. Okay. Now you take a look at this framework. This is the framework that our script follows as well. Okay. BRT discovery. You notice that discovery section is very long because that's the most important se uh, section of the entire script. That's where we find out whether or not we should continue uh, pitching someone or not. You don't have to pitch everyone. The curated pitch, resolve and clarify, certainty and close. Let's rock and roll. This is where we're starting, you guys. Let's go. All right, BRT, build relationship of trust. This is approximately two to three minutes, doesn't take a long time. But the point is this, people buy from those they know, like, and trust, so you must First, position yourself as a person who is likable. If you're not likable, maybe you should have somebody else in your firm doing these calls, okay? A couple of hacks, a couple of things you can do to prepare for that. One, do some research on them coming into the call. Show that you're interested in them. Find things you have in common. Ask them questions. Don't sound like a salesperson. The best way to know whether or not you sound like a salesperson, listen back to your call. If you know, if you listen to that thing and you're like, oh, you just cringe a little bit because you're thinking all I do is just talk about myself or all I do is talk about what we're going to do for them. If that's you stop it. Okay. And then help them talk about themselves. Uh, the book, how to win friends and influence people. One of my favorite books, very good book, but it can be summed up with a very simple statement. If you help people talk about themselves, they will like you. Case in point, just do that two to three minutes build a relationship of trust and make sure that they know you are confident, you know, reliable, good person. Okay. We don't need to spend a ton of time here. This is kind of off the cuff, this part of the script, but this cannot be skipped. We need to make sure that they know who we are. Now, this is where we get into the nitty gritty. Okay. Stick around with me to the end because I'm going to show you how to get uh, resources that go along with this training. But this step right here, the discovery, eight to 10 minutes. It might take longer depending on where you're at understanding that niche. But here's the point of the discovery phase. People don't buy when they understand. They buy when they feel understood. I don't remember who said it, but it's a brilliant quote, okay? The point of the discovery call, once you've gotten through that first initial, those first initial steps, you need to get clear on why they're on the call today. A good way to do that is just to say, thanks for setting up a time to call. What motivated our appointment today? Pretty straightforward, okay? 
Then you deep dive that response and help the prospect better understand their problem. Now, most of the time when you say the first question of what motivated the call today, they're going to give you a superficial, like very top answer. They're going to say, you know, uh, I saw it and I was just thinking I, I would be interested in your services. Okay. We've got to deep dive. We've got to keep going. We've got to get down deeper. We don't know anything yet. Okay. What about it? What about the video or what about the ad interest you the most? What was the reason that you did it? I'm sure you don't just hop on all of these calls to see, you know, what's what. And so they go down and you keep asking questions until at which point in time you understand it. Then you restate the question. Okay. So you sum up the entire thing. Say for an example would be, okay, so you run, you run a chiropractic clinic. You're wanting to get more patients. Specifically, you're wanting to get more spinal decompression patients. The leads that you've gotten in the past, you didn't feel like really turned. You never made ROI on those leads, and that was frustrating. And you're wondering if this is any different. How'd I do? If I'm able to go through a summary like that where I go deep, like level one, two, three, four, five, how'd I do? That means I did the discovery call correct. The discovery phase is also the place where we disqualify people. So if they're not responding, if they're not doing uh, really, if they're not giving anything, you can just say, hey, this might not be a fit. But we'll talk about that here in a second, okay? Now, transition from the bad story and the, imaginal, the imaginable future. Now, the nature of the discovery uh, section is that you're gonna be asking them questions about past failures, about why something didn't work. That's how I got to the lead quality summary, you know, that section. Um, and so you need to make sure that you understand it, but you got to pivot away from it. Okay. And that's what we call the, my friend, I have a friend that calls this uh, hell Island to pleasure Island. Okay. The whole point of this is we need to transition away from that bad story into the imaginable, the imaginable future. Here's what a script might look like. Okay. Most people I talk to have a similar story to yours. They were promised the results, but right after they pay, the company is no longer interested in helping. They provide bad support. It just does, doesn't work. They're frustrated. <coughs> so here's what I'm going to do for the next five minutes. I'm going to show you how we are able to deliver blah, whatever you deliver where others fail. And I'm also going to show you the exact ads we used to do it. Any objection to that? And that's how you transition away from discovery into the curated pitch. Now notice the curated pitch. The entire time you were listening to them, you were getting the lead, or I should say the beginning part of your pitch. Now the good news is if you are niched, you're going to have basically three entry points to the same pitch that you do over and over and over again. Lead quality, uh, booking, and no ROI. Something to that effect. You may have more but to some extent, you're going to have those three pillars, okay? Now, in this section, when you've gone through the discovery, really what you've done is you've asked them what they wanted. Now, all you have to do is sell that to them, okay? Here's what your pitch needs to include. It needs to include an explanation for all their past failures. All the things that we listed off, leads not showing, back, whatever it is, we need to explain those away, Okay? It needs to have a unique mechanism. Your pitch needs to encase a unique mechanism that your product has that the others did not, okay? And then it needs to have some proof that you're telling the truth. Now, the proof part, that doesn't mean you need to have, you know, testimonies that they need to watch. Um, the greatest form of proof is actually demonstration, okay? So we'll talk about that here in a minute. Now, I'm gonna give you an example of the pitch portion of what I would do, typically my own agency. And we're going to use the key identifier that I discovered during the uh, discovery uh, section as lead quality. That person was, you know, they want to grow their practice, they want a spinal decompression, but they had poor lead quality, thus nobody showed up. They couldn't get a hold of ever, anybody, they chased them, yada, yada, yada. So lead quality is the the focal, is the, is the foundation of this, script. Okay. In this example, now you're going to have preloaded versions of your same pitch, but just adaptable from other key points of objection. Okay. This main objection is lead quality. Okay. They absolutely have other objections, 
but this is the core one. So this is one we're going to tackle first. All right. Now, the uh, then once we've done that, we've told this story, we're going to advance the remainder of our pitch into the highlighting of our core benefits, what we do. Okay. Now let's go ahead and get into this pitch. All right. Lead quality. That's where we're at. All right. So, uh, so we're going to act like you are Mr. Dr. Smith. Okay. Dr. Smith for the first year, for the first two years running ads for doctors, just like you, I'd get feedback about things like lead quality, appointments, people not showing, um, you know, maybe people just don't have the financial wherewithal. They're not making any money on their ads. And for a long time, I didn't know how to solve these issues. I'll be honest, but over time we've gotten better. We've committed to learning and trying new things up until one day where we actually had a case study published on my agency by Facebook. Okay. A case study is an amazing thing in and of itself, but it's what the team over at Facebook revealed to us that became the absolute game changer for us. The team over there, what they showed us was they, they showed us exactly what campaigns produced sales for our clients. And I was blown away when I saw that 80% of the revenue from our marketing campaigns actually came from just 20% of the ads that we created. What am I telling you? I'm telling you that even though we never stopped learning and we're always committed and striving to do better, 80% of our ads still sucked, which is what most agencies have to deal with and they don't even know. And this is why oh, I jumped ahead. And this is why most agencies don't work. They don't know the difference between leads and something we call qualified leads. Now with our agency, you have the benefit of knowing that our leads are qualified based on what we learned from that case study and that we have a library full of proven pre-built ads that you can choose from anytime. All you got to do is click them and they go. No agency retainer, monthly big fees like that required. So let me show this, show you how this would work for you. Now, as we were talking, I was learning more about you. I made a couple notes. Uh, and chose a couple ads that I think you might be interested in. They might give you some fast results. In this example, we're going to uh, turn on an ad for some qualified prospects early tonight. And uh, by as early tonight, we can start seeing lead notifications coming in. All right. So step one, I choose the category. Step two, I choose the ad I selected for you, which in this case, we're going to do a spinal lead compression ad. And then step three is I provide your marketing budget and click launch campaign. What happens when you click launch campaign, you have a proven ad we've chose, uh, we chose just now being shown to thousands of people every day and notifications of new leads will begin to hit your phone in as little as an hour in some cases. Okay. Now, as you notice, I kind of went off script a couple times because I've done this so many times. I kind of say it like this, but I also kind of, you know, if I'm feeling really good about the uh, case study or something like that, I'll kind of go off the cuff a little bit. Okay. The whole point is I spent some time to justify why most lead quality stinks. And I told the story at the beginning about case studies, about our case study that showed the method that we use, which is the qualified lead formula to come up with a proven library of ads. Okay. Now, that's not the same pitch I do every time because sometimes it's not lead quality. Sometimes it's booked appointments. And in that case, I have another story I tell. So I have versions of the same pitch just done in different ways. I hope that makes sense. Now, here is a note or a question rather. To demo or not to demo? Most people make the mistake of basing their entire call off of a demo. They, the, what, what, what high level and upex can do together is absolutely phenomenal. But if you want people to buy, showing them the entirety of what's, what's, you know, possible with those two platforms together, it's not going to sell any clients. Okay. You need to be simple. So if I am selling my key feature of run ads using our software, so Facebook ads as a SaaS, here's what I do. One, my first click, the first thing they see is our ads library. I don't show them the two previous clicks. 
okay, the category and the subcategory. I don't show that. Like, all right, so this sciatica decompression video, that's the one that I chose when we were doing our call. The next thing you do is you just put in your daily budget, you put in your clinic website, and you click launch campaign. That's all you have to do. And just like that, you're running ads in about five minutes and you'll start seeing lead notification within a few, and within a few hours. Isn't that amazing? Boom, I turn off the share screen. This is important, you guys. And then once I'm done with that, once I go away, I'll give, isn't that amazing? I'll go quiet. They'll say, yes, that is amazing. They've forgotten what we're here to do, okay? <coughs> So what I do is I do a quick summary. So basically what we offer is this. We give you a library of ads with proven results so you don't have to deal with low quality bad leads, okay? We give you a tool that puts you in control of your own ads, when you run them, how much you wanna spend without, without having to hire an agency and it does it even better. And we give you a predictable source of new, in this case, patients or customers if you're dealing with somebody else new patience so you can grow your practice when you want. How's that sound? That sounds amazing, right? The point is the pitch doesn't take long and you want it to be visual. You want it to be story-based, all right? You also want to show your key features, but base it on the benefits. Now, your pitch did a good job. Your pitch covered the key objections, but it didn't do everything. So this is the transition statement I like to uh, use. The confused mind doesn't buy. That's a good one. Okay, transition statement. Because I know this is new, I'm sure you do have questions. But before we dive into those, do you see how powerful using proven ads and this system can be to bring qualified people into your practice? Yeah, I see that. Awesome. What questions do you have? Okay. Now, all of the questions after this, this, the resolve and clarify, you see it takes five to 10 minutes. It could take one minute, just depending on how many objections they have. Okay. Um, but the whole point is you cannot just, you can't unexplain a problem. You have to give it clarity. You have to like explain away that way. They're not confused. Now here are the two approaches that I primarily use when I'm solving concerns. Number one, I use a question loop. Okay, so basically, if they give me any kind of, so how do I, how do we know that these are real people and oh, that's a terrible, real people and not bots or whatever? Well, why would you think that they would be bots? Have you had an experience before that you had bot leads? Well, we just had, you know, a lot of leads that we could never get a hold of when we were chasing people. Okay, well, that's unfortunate. Have you, how many times have you tried this? Have you heard of other people that have had the same issue? I would keep asking questions. Have you heard of anybody succeeding with Facebook ads? Oh yeah, I've heard that. Okay. Well, what do you think that they did? Well, they were probably just getting better leads. Yeah, they were probably working with an agency like ours that has proven ads and just knows how to run ads. Yeah, they probably were. Well, um, if you had an experience with a bad agency, my apologies for that. But like I said, our agency had, uh, has proven results. We've been around for a long time and you can see our results are reviews or whatever. See, I just go through the problem discovery solution cycle and I explain away their concerns. The story response. The story response is the one I go to most of the time because again, it's the same objections over and over again. And basically the process is this. They give me a question. I restate or I summarize, in other words, I summarize their core complaint, their core objection. So that's the restate part. And then I have a, uh, a story. I'll tell a story, you know, and one of the things I do, lead quality. I'll tell a story about a clinic. One day they, or they, they, they grew their practice by double in two months. But the first six weeks were terrible because they didn't know the system. And then one day the clinic uh, director got on the phone and he said, uh, or he got with the front desk and he said, the next lead that comes in, pass them over to me. He followed the script. He did everything that he was supposed to do. The next day, the person showed up. They converted to care. They blew up their practice in two, in, in two months. We never changed the ads. Same ads when they were failing were the same ads when they were winning. So it's not the ad quality. It's the process and whether or not people follow it. Does that make sense? Boom. All right. Let's move on. I know this is getting long, but this is important, okay? 
don't sell advice. What's the key differentiator between a salesperson and an advisor? Think about that one for a minute. I'll give you the answer. Sales people tell, advisors ask. Just, if you feel like you're talking too much in your call, just stop and ask a question. Base the direction and the flow of your sales pitch slash sales call on being able to advance your prerogatives with questions. All right. Now, once we're done with the resolving concerns section, we now have to go back, summarize, and then provide certainty. Because again, they can't retain that much information. They have already forgotten. So the client's forgotten the pitch. So we reinforce by, by summarizing what we talked about the entire call. So I might say something like, all right, so Dr. Smith, this has been an awesome call. Based on our conversation, we are, we've got probably two to five different ads that I know will work awesome for you. You click them, you put on $50 a budget a day, and you watch that thing go. And I am certain that that will crush it for your clinic. Now, I know that you've had bad experiences before. However, based on what we see in our, in our business, and the people we work with, you're a perfect fit because of the type of patient you're trying to help and the system we've built around that specific patient. Boom, summarize certainty, okay? Then all we gotta do is just give them the opportunity to decide. Assuming the tone of the call has resolved to the what's next stage, this, this phrase that I'm about to share with you can be an easy way to transition to a close. Okay, this is a way to make, to make it so you're selling, but you're not selling, all right? All right, Dr. Smith, after showing people how we can help them, I found that people fall into one of two buckets. Bucket number one, they're not sure. They just don't feel like, for whatever reason, it's a fit, okay? Or bucket number two, this sounds great. What is next? Which of those buckets do you think you fall into? And then just be quiet. When you give them those options, by the way, bucket number one, they've made it this far, they should definitely not answer bucket number one, okay? But just because they answer bucket number two does not mean that they close. We need to give them a reason why. We need to apply urgency and scarcity into our call today. So here's what we do, okay? Um, this following script, I've give, I give you two examples at the end of what you can do. You can make up your own. You can do whatever you want, but here's what I do. Okay, so Dr. Smith, here's what I'm going to do. I've just sent you an email with the startup link, but I want, I want to over-deliver even more because you're perfect. You're really great for our, our, our company. Go ahead and open that email and click the link to get started. Let me know when you do that. Okay, you there? Now. Because I know how well this is gonna work for you, for your clinic, I'm gonna give you a code. That code waives your setup fee of 997. Okay, I'm gonna save you some money. We can get started today. Let me know when you're ready for the code. Option number one. Option number two, and this is an option that you might choose if you are newer, starting out, you know, for whatever reason. This is a little bit less friction, okay? Because I know how well this will work for you, I'm going to give you a code that waives all of your fees for the first two weeks. So you can try this risk-free. Let me know when you're ready for the code. There's no risk. They can try uh, for two weeks risk-free. We ran a test on this a while back and 85% conversion from free trial to paid customer is what we got. And for us, that was plenty. So um, what's next? Well, in the description section below this video, there is an adaptable script. Okay, you can take that script, you can write it out yourself. I went through the steps and I think what you should do is go back through and go to each section, listen to it and write out the questions and the sequence that you're going to get the most. That way you can really hone in on that script. And then the second, well, I can subscribe. If this content is awesome, if you appreciate it, let us know. We really enjoy making these videos for you. And if you want to learn how to sell SaaS to local businesses, go to upex.com, learn more, and we'll see you on the next video.